we are doing a video that I've been waiting to do for a while. We're going to break down all the different artist residencies I've done, and I'm going to talk to you about my perspectives on the pros and cons of each residency. And the reason I keep returning to these artist residency videos is that I don't see a lot of content on YouTube or in the online space about residencies. I think a lot of artists that are mid-career or later go on them and they're older and they don't really document. And I think a lot of young people that go to residencies are still figuring out their careers, getting into it. But in terms of the writer space especially i don't see a lot of people talk about residencies and i've done a lot um, for those that are new here my name is prince shakur i am a new york city based artist i published my first book last year and i do a lot of different things i do youtube i do travel videos working on my podcast everything i'm also working on a novel right now but right now let's talk about artist residencies for those that don't know artist residencies are basically spaces that you can apply to whether it's camp or a location, but artist residencies are programs that you can apply to where if you're accepted, they give you time and space and usually resources to be able to do your work and make your art. And that usually means they provide you a room, lodging to stay in. A lot of residencies provide food. And then also there are other artists or some kind of community element or activities that artists can participate in. And it's just unlimited or unadulterated space that you can go enjoy the residency, figure out what you want to make. Some residencies ask you to submit a proposal. Some ask you to be involved in community events or do a reading or participate in some other way. And some don't have you do anything at all. And there are all different sorts of residencies. There's residencies in cities and more rural environments, residencies where you're alone. There's also this whole conversation about whether or not people should pay for residencies. I personally never paid for a residency. I'm a poor artist. I'm not gonna pay to go somewhere unless it's just paying for travel, which to me isn't the most ridiculous thing in the world to pay for. And residencies can be a really big and complicated thing, especially if you didn't go to graduate school, if you don't know a lot of artists. I started applying to residencies around 2018 when I moved back to Ohio and one of my roommates was a really amazing, is a really amazing collage artist, a multimedia artist, and he was just like, you don't apply to residencies? You should apply. I've done a few of these and here's how you do it. And since then, I have done... Sangam House, 12 Arts, Pages, Studios of Key West, Norton Island, ACA, La Maison Baldwin. So that's seven residencies I've done. So I've got... I've got some information for you. So we're gonna go through each of these residencies and I'm gonna break down my pros and cons and um, we're just gonna start from there. And so the first residency I did was Sangam House in Bangalore, India. Sangam House is an internationally funded residency that usually intakes around four to five artists per session and their sessions usually are about a month. I believe the sessions are from like October to January. I remember when I was accepted in 2019, I was really surprised. I was really deep into applying to a lot of residencies and using this artist grant that's available in Ohio called GCAC. The basic setup of it is that you show up there for a month, it's this really beautiful modern house, you're there with other writers, um, there were other fiction writers and poets and people that wrote different mediums. Um, we Our meals were made for us, it was in this beautiful area of Bangalore near this really heavily populated street with a lot of stores. They set up different events for us to go to. I was there for about five weeks and I got really close with the other writers. First we'll go through the pros. I loved going really far away for residency. It felt very much like an adventure. I think all residencies can feel like adventures but especially this one. I was literally going across the world and I was leaving for a considerable amount of time and that was a little overwhelming depending on when you can find out but I found out about two and a half months before and I luckily was able to raise money to pay for my airfare to India. Another pro once I arrived was definitely the house. It was very clean, modern, lots of white. Um, there were three different balconies that we could hang out on. Um, we each got our own room, we got our own bathroom, there was a big common area that had a living room with couches and a dining room area and then a kitchen table area and a kitchen and the whole house was just filled with light because it was a lot of floor-to-ceiling windows like where we're staying it was just beautiful it was india like 
I felt like we had our own writing oasis and that was really beautiful. Another pro was definitely the other writers. Since this was my first residency, I didn't know what to expect, but definitely compared to other residencies, this one had a lot of camaraderie. Um, there was one other American. Um, she actually lives here in New York now and helped me get an adjunct job at a, co at a college here. Another writer there was Filipina, um, Reggie Deguia, and uh, we talked a lot about poetry. There was another writer there named Manan Kapoor, was from another part of India. He um, recently put out a book that was an autobiography on the Kashmiri American poet, Agashahid Ali. And we all got along really well. I just have very fond memories of waking up going to the kitchen, hanging out with Reiji, saying, okay, what are you working on today? Here's what I'm working on today. We'd go to the fridge, eat some leftovers, um, and we would just work. And I would usually work in the common area. One or two of the other writers would join. We'd work around each other. Sometimes you'd go back to your room. Sometimes one of us would go and take a break or you both want to take a break together. I still talk to most of the people from this residency and I feel a lot of love for them. And I think having that camaraderie and community made me so much more productive because I'm definitely someone I learned through this residency that likes to talk through ideas with people, bounce ideas off of them. And so that was really amazing. Another pro I think is kind of weird to say, but not that weird, is being in a new culture. I think any residency can be new and sort of overwhelming and stimulating, but being in India for me was so exciting. I'd wanted to travel there for years. I'm very much a backpacker traveler. So it was interesting going there and being picked up and having a place to stay and it being really nice and just kind of being given a few comforts that I never really expected to experience my first time in India. I just really loved the setup of the residency. You felt very taken care of. They had someone pick you up from the airport. They had a residency sort of volunteer director there, um, Pascal. He gave us each a tour of the house. He gave us a tour of the neighborhood, told us where the grocery stores were was there pretty much every day in and out to answer any of our questions. He would coordinate with the chef and just really be there with us if we were going to events and really kind of be our liaison into the space, which I haven't really experienced at any other residency in that way. And it was just really special because he kind of felt like a residency dad in a way. Another big pro for this residency was the food. When I tell you, I showed up and I was like, oh yeah, I like Indian food. And then I showed up and I was like, I don't know anything about Indian food. I loved the food because every dinner the chef would write out what they were making that day on a board and me and the other like foreigners would be like oh my god what is that like Manan what is that and then we have so many questions and then I would eat and it, there was just such a diversity of things that we ate and it just amazed me how grateful I felt to have this food how much easier it made my days to not have to think about it we always had leftovers you could go to the grocery store and pick up little things that you wanted but the food easily blew me away. Like, I think that also made it feel like a home, which I haven't really thought of because when you get to sit down with people and eat with them every day, the kind of conversations we had were the kind of conversations I wish me and my family had at the dining room table growing up. Another pro for this residency was the amount of cultural programming that they set up for us. Um, they had four or five authors uh, locally or who were visiting Bangalore come and visit us at the house and have dinner with us. So we got to talk to different Indian authors, talk about politics, talk about the creative industry there. We got to go to the Bangalore Book Festival, I believe it was, and see some people talk to different events that we wanted to. There was also two different book events that authors from Sangam House were invited to speak on. I remember someone that visited Sangam House one day, worked at the Bangalore International Cultural Center. And when I was at um, Sangam House, I was working on my memoir. And so I was talking about it a lot and I was talking to this dinner guest and he said, oh, your story's very interesting and we haven't had many black perspectives at the cultural center. Would you want to do a talk during your month here? I did a talk at the Bangalore International Cultural Center about James Baldwin and his influence on my life and how I kind of view radical artistry. Another pro for Sangam House was definitely how productive I felt that we all were. And I think it was because all of these other elements were so well taken care of that I was able to write roughly half of my book there, which was around 35,000 words. I wrote two different essays. I finished most of a short film script and I worked on other things. And so it just kind of shows that when you do a good residency where things are really taken care of and you feel comfortable, the work can come relatively easy. And 
it's different for everyone at every residency, but that was another pro for Sangam House. I don't have that many cons for Sangam House. I think one con is the flip side of what I talked about with the travel. I think with an international residency, funding your own travel there can be a barrier for a lot of people. It would have been a barrier for me if I didn't have community who could help me raise money at the time. And so I think residencies where money comes out of pocket from the artist can be a big, um, and so I would say if you're applying to something like Sangam House, really think about how realistic it is for you to get there or what your funding options would be. Another con for this residency was very much a con that I experienced as a black person and it's a con, but I also appreciate the way this residency handled it. On the first day when we did our tour, Pascal pulled me aside and he was like, you're black, we're in India. A lot of people here haven't interacted with black people or they haven't seen them in person. People might stare. I want you to understand that that might happen. I've traveled to a lot of places. It's very seldom that someone who isn't black will stop you and say that and try to check in and make sure you're comfortable. And there were definitely a few instances where I was uncomfortable throughout the month. Sometimes walking around, at the time I had dreads, people would stare. I'd go into stores, people would just stare at my head instead of staring at me. Old men especially love staring at me. There was one particular time where me and the other residents went to a park and we visited this park and an entire high school class surrounded me, one of the other artists, and everyone is demanding that I take a photo with them. Did this happen to anyone else? No. Was anyone else black? No. <laughs> And so I think when you are going off into other parts of the world, be aware of the cultural setting, whether or not people are used to someone that looks like you. And this isn't to say don't go, but just be aware and kind of try to think about what your boundaries are, how and what in what ways you'll react and what you're willing to deal with, because it can be a lot. And that was definitely one of the things that kind of took me out of the experience sometimes. But I love Sangam House and... I don't really have any other cons. See, the next residency I did was Paige's program. These next two residencies are kind of different models. Paige's was a residency that I got accepted into that is quite a bit more like a fellowship. So basically you were accepted into Paige's through the Wexner Center for the Arts, which is a museum in Columbus, Ohio, where I was living. And they set you up with high school classes and you do supplementary conversations to talk about different texts that they're reading in those classes. I was accepted with another writer, Saeed Jones, but because it was the pandemic, we did high school visits. And so we got to talk to high schoolers after they read James Baldwin's work. And this is a residency that called a residency, but it's actually paid. So at the end, we were paid for these conversations. And typically, if, since it's in person, that would involve travel, physically visiting these high schools, kind of planning through your conversations with the residency director. I would say the pros of this kind of residency are that it gets you in an education setting, a classroom setting, that it is paid. But the con is, is that you're not necessarily doing work towards your own particular project, which is why typically most people do arts residencies. You want time away from your normal life to be able to work on your art with your time uninterrupted. This was something that you squeeze into your life. The next residency I did was called 12 Arts Residency. And this one is kind of similar to Paige's, but it's different. 12 Arts is a residency where you're accepted and you pitch a project that you're working on and they want you to develop your book idea in some way while you're there. And this isn't a residency where you stay there and you're lodging there. And this is also a residency that's only available to Cleveland or Cleveland related artists. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, so I was able to pitch myself really easily. This is also a James Baldwin related residency. I've written about James Baldwin a lot. For this one, I definitely, 20, I went into it in meet a lot of people that were already through their writing projects but they weren't. And so I'd say the pros for this residency are if you are local to Cleveland or if you're doing a residency like this where you're local to that area, so traveling to it isn't that expensive or strenuous. I was living in Columbus at the time. I didn't have a car, so I was trying to bus to Cleveland. We weren't given travel stipends because you're meant to be local. Another um, con is that this was more for people, this residency ended up being for people that more at the beginning stages of their writing and I was definitely further into it. I was close to wanting to find agents. I remember during our first session I read an excerpt of my book and this older woman in the group was like, you're writing a memoir? You're like 25. Just turn it into a fiction novel. That makes more sense. And I was just like, oh my god, here we go again. And so I ended up leaving that residency after about two weeks. And I would say um, this residency model can be good if you're local, if you're new in your career, if you want a lot of feedback, if you're kind of unsure about where your project is going, 
Residencies where they help you develop your project can be really beneficial, especially if it's not coming out of pocket, because it is something that you can add to your resume and show that you can show up in writing spaces that you're comfortable with talking about your work. It's a series of skill sets that are useful. It's, it's basically a workshop setting residency. The next residency I did was Studios of Key West. Studios of Key West was definitely kind of like a sleeper hit residency. Like I got accepted into it at the end of 2020. And so mind you, the world was still like murky. COVID is still very much a serious thing. And so they let me choose a number of months that I wanted to go. And I chose December. I chose to stay for a month. You're given your bedroom and a bathroom and all of these suites are in the same house and there's a connected kind of outdoor area and there's a common kitchen. It was winter. I was a little sad because it was winter. I got to run away to Florida. So the next residency is one I went to right after Norton Island. It was called Atlantic Center for the Arts. I won't even delve that deep into this one. I will just say that Atlantic Center for the Arts is a residency that accepts artists into different artist groups and each artist group has a mentoring artist. So I was accepted into the writing and painting group. I ended up hating this residency. I think I've done a video where I talked about this, but I don't know if I've ever uploaded it. About two weeks in learned that another resident was going to be kicked out unfairly and me and a number of other artists there tried to advocate for them. The residency's process to working through this was very horrible, very not transparent. We were in New Smyrna Beach, which was Trump country, and it was just a very triggering experience being around a lot of conservatives in that area, also being with this residency that touts people like Audrey Lord as people that taught there, yet they can't do the work to really figure out what's happening with artists that they accept into their spaces and instead wanted to resort to kicking someone out and not doing anything at all on a level of empathy or compassion. And so I ended up helping advocate for this artist. I also ended up walking out two weeks in. And the major con I learned with this residency is that just because you're accepted into a place doesn't mean that you should go. I think it's important to understand the politics of the location that you're going into, understanding the politics of the organization that you're going into, and understanding what your exit plan is. Have money that can allow you to leave on a whim. Um, you don't deserve to stay in a place where you feel like you or other people are being exploited or mistreated or ignored. It's just, it's really been heavy on my heart since then. And I think it's important to be transparent about this kind of stuff. The last residency I did, and this is the one I've documented the most, La Maison Baldwin. La Maison Baldwin. If you know me, you know I love James Baldwin. I love everything that he's about. I love talking about him, reading about him. I applied to a residency in 2020 that got postponed because of the pandemic, a month-long residency in Saint Paul de Vence, France, which is near Nice. It's where James Baldwin lived for the last 17 years of his life. It's where he wrote a lot, made a lot of friends, felt really at home. I traveled there, I show up, it's late. <laughs> I get picked up by this French lady. I'm trying to use my really bad French. Um, they take me to this little cottage. It's very, it's just very cute. I'm there at night, I wake up and it's shining and I walk around this town and it's shining and it was great, but there were also some issues. Pros, location. I love France. I've gone back a lot. My ex is French. I loved being in the footsteps of Baldwin, learning more about him being there meeting locals, like St. Paul de Vence is very much a town that is changing, I think is being gentrified by tourism. But the local sensibility that I was able to connect with and learn about was very inspiring. I had a little cottage that was really cute all to myself, courtyard area, a little, you can go to the beach, you can take the bus there. St. Paul de Vence itself, I think is changing and I'll talk about that in my cons, but I definitely loved how artsy it was. I loved how much everyone there appreciated art. It's historically known as a place where a lot of poor artists would go to to do their studio work. Um, a lot of paint. I was really social when I was there. I told myself, you're gonna be the friendliest version of yourself. So I was talking to people in shops, talking to people at restaurants, trying to but use my really bad French. My first week there, I ended up befriending these artists that were in their 20s that grew up in Saint Paul de Vence that were like more left and like just really cool. And they invited me out. We hung out the whole time that I was there a lot. We did barbecues together. We hung out at this bar called Le Cirque, drank a lot of rosé. I had a blast. So another pro was definitely the people that I met. The other pro was definitely the, the, the chateau that I was in. I felt very safe. I felt very comfortable. I felt like I had my privacy. There's a lot of cons for this residency. The organization that ran it was run by a white lesbian who I think kind of went off the rails and disrespected a lot of people in the local environment and just 
wasn't really that well of a planner. They didn't prepare me for the different things that I would need when I was there as much as they should have. I got a grocery stipend and a travel stipend. I got my travel stipend late. Sometimes the grocery stipend would come late. Even getting to the grocery store, you have to take a bus. Um, doing laundry, they didn't really have like a welcome packet for me. And I think those kind of things are really necessary, especially when artists are going to completely other different countries and environments. Um, another con was that I think the organization was just kind of a shit show. They had a conference when I was there. They invited hundreds of academics. Looking at the conference, it was really hot. It was really poorly planned. Things were really far apart. There were a lot of old people. They didn't provide enough water. And a lot of people were overcharged. For me, I felt like I was misguided about certain comforts that I would be given. And when I was there, I was able to be flexible and to accommodate what was happening. But I think that any artist shouldn't have to be flexible. You shouldn't have to figure things out and be like, oh no, it's fine. You should be taken care of because you were accepted there on the valor of your work. You're being praised as a black artist in lineage with Baldwin, yet they can't help you find laundry. They can't have people check in on you. They can't run a conference that's done well enough. And so my cons were that just that over my time, I learned that the organization wasn't as trustworthy as I wished it would have, especially if it's an organization in Baldwin's honor. But thank you for watching this video. I know I shared a lot. Um, I love talking about residencies. Comment below with any of the questions you have. Um, do you want any other kind of residency videos? I don't have any residencies coming up soon, but I love talking about the process or different things related to it. Um, this might be one of the last videos I do like this because I don't have much more to say about the residency space. But if you have any questions, leave them below. And thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.